Hi, this is Emerald and welcome to the Diamond Net and today I'm going to be talking about archetypes and how to use them for personal growth. Alright, so this is going to be a very practical video all about using archetypes for personal growth. But before I get into that, I want to give you a quick definition of what an archetype is. So basically, an archetype is a common pattern, structure, or symbol that is inherent to the human psyche. And these archetypes can be found throughout various different cultures and various different eras and have a certain similarity that carries through even in the most different of time periods and cultures. Now these archetypes show themselves in various fables, fairy tales, myths, religious stories, dreams, and visions. Um, so they can be found in many, many different places. Alright, so I wanted to give you some examples of some archetypes just to give you an idea of what they might look like. Now the archetypes that I'm going to be referring to are basically based around human roles, like roles that people could potentially play within a society. But those aren't the only archetypes that exist. I'm going to list 12 of them. There are many, many archetypes, and some of them don't have to do with a particular person at all. They're just common structures or patterns, almost in a similar way if you're familiar with Plato's World of the Forms, where you could have something that has an archetypal structure that has nothing to do with a human being. But here are the 12. All right, we have the caregiver, the ruler, the artist, the innocent, the sage, the explorer, the outlaw, the magician, the hero, the lover, the jester, and the everyman. So you want to think of these archetypes as kind of like the skeleton of a symbol. So basically, you have your bare bones, and those are the same no matter which culture you go to, no matter which era you go to, if you had a time machine. You know, but each society and each culture is going to flesh out that skeleton in different ways. So the ruler archetype in modern day America, let's say, is going to look very different than the ruler archetype did in Mesopotamia, but there is going to be that common thread, that common skeleton that solidifies that symbol as having a similar archetypal meaning and having a similar meaning internally to us that is inherent to our understanding of the world. Now, archetypes, in a sense, you can see them pop up in stories and, and these kind of things, and that's oftentimes what they're most thought of, is like, okay, you have these symbols that appear in stories and you can derive a certain type of meaning from them. But one of the things that I think is very, very important to know about archetypes is that you can actually embody the archetype itself. So the archetypes reside in an area of the psyche called the collective unconscious. And this means that everybody has this general ancestral instinctual memory, let's say, of these different forms. And these forms can kind of step forward in our identity when we need them. So for example, and this is an archetype that I didn't mention in my list, but there's the warrior archetype. The warrior archetype might come up naturally for, let's say, a child or a teenager particularly who might need protection in their life. And so in a sense, they can grow to have the same strengths and sometimes the same weaknesses as the warrior archetype. So they can grow, if they've integrated it well, they can grow to be a strategic thinker and they can learn to protect themselves. But if they only embody the warrior archetype and they repress away the other aspects of their identity, they can become quite callous and hardened like the disintegrated um, warrior archetype, the unhealthy warrior archetype. And this is why it's really, really important to realize when we have integrated an archetype already, because many of us already have, this is quite a natural process, and most of us do this quite a lot as children and as teenagers, especially when we're first weaving our identity, these archetypes tend to really come forward. The distinction that I would make between a healthy way to integrate an archetype versus an unhealthy way would be if it's healthy if it's integrated with the rest of the personality and it's not choking out other aspects of it. So if your archetype is dominating, possessing, and causing repression, then that's a problem. Um, but if you're able to integrate your archetype um, with all the other aspects of your identity and it works nicely with those aspects, then that's a healthy way to integrate that archetype. 
So let's say that somebody has a well-integrated caretaker archetype. You know, so a person who has a well-integrated and healthy caretaker archetype that is not possessing or dominating them, what will happen is that person can then find fulfillment and joy in being able to help others. But a person can have a dominator caretaker uh, archetype that has essentially possessed their personality and they start to lose aspects of themselves that are able to let's say take care of themselves and be independent and so it becomes their whole life is all about taking care of others and they might not be able to bring themselves to take care of themselves because it is antithetical to that caretaker archetype that has such a stronghold over the personality. So a good way to think about this is that you want to be able to make room in your identity to hold space for an archetype, but you don't want to cling on so tightly to an archetype that it becomes the only thing in your personality or that other things end up getting lost in the process. Now at this point you might say that what I'm saying is quite abstract, like how do you even go about integrating an archetype? But it's actually it's something that happens quite naturally. Um, so I want to bring up the topic of play and how children tend to play make-believe. You know, and we tend to think of this as being just mere child's play, you know, and it's kind of like, oh, it's a fun game for them and they're enjoying it. But what you have to understand is that the function of play in every species is so that the young learns to do the things that the adult animal does. So, for example, a bear cub fights with its brothers and sisters and it's, you know, it play fights with its parents because it is trying to learn the skills of fighting and hunting so that it can use that later on in life. And child's play is the same exact thing. So when a child is playing make-believe and pretending to be a pirate or a princess or a doctor, what they're essentially doing is they're they're experimenting with putting on identities and social masks. And this is very important for living within the human matrix, you know, because we're a very social kind of species. And so all of this make-believe is actually helping to create room for archetypes to come up and for them to develop aspects of their identity. So it's very integral to the growth process for kids to be able to imitate these various different archetypal figures and various role models. And it's important that they have positive role models for that reason. Teenagers also tend to do this, but they tend to take their identifications a bit more seriously, similar to how adults tend to take their identifications quite seriously. So a teenager might find a certain type of music that they, um, they really orient themselves to. And most types of music have certain archetypes that come up within that. You know, sometimes the outlaw archetype comes up. Or, you know, sometimes it's uh, things like, you know, um, there's a lot of like power and authority in there, so the ruler might even come up in that. And so through listening to that music and through imitating the pop culture figures or various characters that they might identify with, they're essentially finding those archetypes in themselves and learning how to embody those strengths. Now again, one problem with teenagers, because they tend to take these things very seriously, just like adults do, they're also in danger of an archetype essentially possessing them. And they, I know that from being a teenager myself in the past that sometimes it was like, oh, I want to be able to embody this kind of identity, but I feel like it doesn't go with the rest of my identity. And, and so there was a temptation to repress away aspects. So this is always something to watch out for. So just with this in the background, you can kind of see how this process sort of works through imitation, through embodying a certain type of identity. Now the reason why these imitation games work for kids and teenagers and would also work for adults as well is essentially you're learning how to step into the vibe or the energy of that archetype. You're learning what it is to move and feel into the experience of being the ruler or being the caretaker and essentially learning how to find that energy in yourself. So it's kind of like it's not like you're putting on a mask. Like it's not like oh I want to be the caretaker now I'm going to put on this mask. What it is, it's stepping into the role and playing around within that role and holding space within yourself for those that like vibe to come through. All right, so now with that background, I'm going to give you a, just a few simple steps for being able to integrate an archetype. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to see what archetypes are already um, 
at play within yourself because chances are there are probably many already at play and so you can just look at my list of 12 that I had mentioned earlier or you can just look up a list of archetypes there's tons and tons and tons and tons and if you notice that there are certain archetypes that are um, are dominating the situation you know then you want to work toward integrating the aspects that those um, those dominator archetypes choked out so that's one of the first things to do is just to look out for that. Now the second thing you'll want to do is you want to drop this one limiting belief that I think really stops a lot of adults from being able to grow into various archetypes in the same way that children and teenagers do. And it's that adults feel like they already have a solid identity and a solid personality. And they feel like imitating and experimenting is somehow inauthentic when it really is quite a natural process to go through. And so I want you to embrace the idea that the personality is malleable. It's a very plastic kind of thing. And you can always add in aspects of yourself that have been repressed away. And you can also invite in archetypes to help you sort of gain whatever strengths those archetypes have. So for example, if you're somebody who's never taken up a leadership position, you might feel like being a leader is not authentic to you. But that's only because you have not embodied that archetype yet. And so to drop that limiting belief that, oh, that's just not my personality, and actually explore and find the aspects of yourself, find the waiting potential that's ready to be a leader. And to access that part in yourself through the archetype, almost like the archetype is the mask that that part of yourself wears. All right, the third thing to do in this situation is to find role models and pop culture figures, cartoon characters, any type of character that really resonates with you. If you find that you're watching Breaking Bad or something like that, and you find that you're really identifying with like Walter White, like the main character, you know, it's likely because that character has some aspect of yourself, whether it be some repressed trait or some archetypal trait. And you can essentially use characters in this way to have a connection to yourself because you resonate with them. Or let's say that you have a person in your life that you really look up to. Let's say that you have an older sibling that really embodies the archetype of the jester and they're a really funny person and they can really liven up things and they can kind of go into things uh, with this kind of devil may care attitude. Like if you look up to that person, you can seek to embody the archetype that they embody through essentially trying to feel what it would be like to be them. Or if you have some other icon that you really look up to, like let's say that you really look up to Salvador Dali, you can see that he embodies the artist archetype quite well. And so essentially you can kind of feel into that archetype through Salvador Dali's work and through you know your associations with him. And then through basically imitating that likeness within yourself, you can find the artist archetype within yourself and to embody some of those same strengths. And so here's the actual process. So once you have found a, a figure that you identify with, whether it be a living person, a dead person, real person, pop culture figure, cartoon character, it doesn't matter. Once you find somebody who embodies those archetypes that you look up to and that you want to embody, you, on your own time, I recommend doing this by yourself, it'd be a little weird to do it around people, but by yourself, you know, start to feel into what it would be like to be that character or be that person or be like that role model and start thinking of yourself in a similar way to how you think about them. Now, in a sense, you want to do this imitation not in the sense that you're just going around imitating them all the time. You know, the idea of imitating them is, again, to explore yourself and to find the authentic kernel within you that is that archetype. So it's not like, let's say that you, um, let's say you really identify with, let's say, Salvador Dali. It's not like you go around acting like Salvador Dali all the time. What you do is you kind of feel into him through being able to like imitate his likeness and seeing how he acted and how he would respond to things. And essentially pretending to do that and in doing so you create a space where you can explore that archetype within yourself. So it's all about finding that part of you as opposed to just putting on a mask of somebody else. And again, as you imitate this role model or this character, what you want to make sure is that that 
archetype is not dominating your personality. Like you're not trying to throw away your old personality to don this new personality. You're trying to find a way to integrate the general vibe of that character, that archetype, into what already exists. And this process of archetype integration is so powerful because it connects to something that is integral to yourself but is also beyond your conscious mind which is just very very helpful um, in order to be able to gain new strengths and to be able to feel your way into new patterns of being. Anyway that's all I have for you for now I hope that you enjoyed this video if you did go ahead click the like button below and subscribe and also hit the notification bell so that you get notifications through YouTube whenever I release a new video. Also, I'm currently offering life coaching, dream work coaching, and tarot readings. And so if you're interested in those, I have links down below and you can learn more about those. Or you can email me at the diamondnetchannel at gmail.com for more information. Um, and basically, you know, what all of those things are based around is essentially being able to gain more clarity and to make better strategic decisions off of the clarity that's gained in the sessions. And so if you're looking for somebody to help you see things from new angles and a strategic partner to help keep you motivated toward reaching your goals, then I highly recommend looking into those services um, and I'd be happy to work with you on that. And oh! Actually, I was about to forget. I just started a new channel as well. So I have a second channel. It's called the Diamond Net Tarot. And I'll leave the link down for that below as well. It's also in my related channel section. And I plan to release videos to that once a week based around the archetypal language of the tarot. So if you enjoyed this video on archetypes, I highly recommend signing up or subscribing to that channel and also clicking the notification bell because I'll be going in a lot more depth with symbols and archetypes in a way that I wouldn't be able to do on my regular channel because this channel is very, very broad, but I want to get more specific in terms of really being able to peel apart different archetypes and, and myths and figuring out how they generally work through the language of the tarot to actually help people understand what's going on internally. And certainly, the tarot is a very rich archetypal language, so if you want to get acquainted with some archetypes, I highly recommend maybe getting one of the Rider Waite decks and just like looking through it, because you get a clear visual image of what some of these archetypes might look like. Anyway, so I'll leave the link down below for that. Um, I hope that you subscribe to that as well. And other than that, that's all I have. And until next time, keep becoming more you. Mm -hmm.